It was another fiery hearing in the Supreme Court today when it comes to the Kolkata RG Corps rape and murder of a young doctor. The Supreme Court has asked protesting doctors in Bengal to return to work and set a deadline of 5 p.m. on Tuesday evening or face possible disciplinary action. I'm Barkhadat, you're with the Mojo Story. Our focus continues to be on the aftermath and the investigation into the rape and murder of a young doctor in Kolkata's RG Kaur College. Today, there were heated exchanges in the Supreme Court. Kapil Sibyl, representing the West Bengal government, blamed the protest for taking the lives of 23 people, even as Jawahar Sarkar spoke to the Mojo story on why he has quit as Trinamool member uh, of Kong, uh, TMC MP because of his disappointment with how the government has handled the protests and the investigation. Now, many questions were raised in the Supreme Court about the integrity of the post-mortem and the forensic investigation. The Solicitor General made an allegation that the condition of the victim's body and the findings of the forensic report did not add up, that these samples will now be sent to the All India Medical Institute. At one point, the Chief Justice seemed to lose his school with a BJP leader and a lawyer. By the end of it, the Supreme Court's Chief Justice, the country's Chief Justice, had ordered the protesting doctors to go back to work by 5 p.m. on Tuesday evening or face possible disciplinary action. So it was a mixed bag of outcomes, even as global protests in solidarity with the victim continue from Melbourne to Manhattan. The images you're seeing on your screen are of the medical community globally speaking up for the victim and asking for justice for her. Now, given the Supreme Court's um, diktat, as it were, the protesting doctors must return to work. And also given Mamta Banerjee's revelation that seven days ago, the police chief had offered to resign. What happens next? Remember, one of the key demands of the protesting doctors has been the resignation and the removal of the police chief. That clearly is something that has not happened. It could have happened, but the West Bengal chief minister took a decision to the contrary, as she herself revealed today. Let's introduce our panel to understand what might happen next. Will the protesting doctors have to heed what the Chief Justice is saying? You know, where does the case go from here? If the postmortem postmortem's integrity has been questioned by several lawyers today, what happens next? Sanjoy Ghosh is with us. Sanjoy Ghosh is, of course, a senior advocate. Uh, welcome to the program. Also joining us is Nilanjan Das, uh, who is the leader of the Trinamool Congress. Welcome and Namaskar, Nilanjan. Also joining us is Dr. Kunal Sarkar. He's a leading cardiac surgeon. He's been outspoken voice asking for justice for the victim. Welcome back, Dr. Sarkar. And also joining us is Dr. Tapas Pramanik. Uh, he has been uh, somebody who's also been an outspoken voice. He was on duty on the night of the crime at the RG Corps Medical College. Welcome, everybody. And we'll also be playing out clips of Jawahar Sarkar, uh, who spoke to me earlier on why he took the decision uh, to, to resign. Let me, for once, since I've been so critical of the Trinamool Congress all these days, give the first word to Nilanjan. Uh, let me give him the first word uh, to understand uh, how he sees what's happened in Supreme Court today. Nilanjan, looking at your social media feed very closely, you have been raising for quite a while uh, that patients have been suffering because of these protests. You have spoken about potential casualties. Today, Mr. Sibyl made that official. He took a number. He said 23 deaths have taken place. The doctors might turn around and say that they have no option. They have no other way to express their protests but what they've been doing. And theirs is a people-led movement. In fact, very clearly, the doctors have not affiliated to any political party. They've asked political leaders to leave their protests, whichsoever political party they may be from. Do you think it's fair to blame the doctors at this point for these casualties, A? And B, how do you see what's happened in the Supreme Court today, including critically the Chief Justice's instruction that the doctors must return to work? Yeah. Uh, good evening, Barkha, and good evening to all the other panelists. So uh, what, what the Honorable Chief Justice of India has said is what we were demanding all this while. Our National General Secretary, Mr. Abhishek Banerjee, had also said that uh, the protest can go on along with the medical services. So that's what we were demanding all this while. So if uh, the doctors, the junior doctors who were protesting, if they had allowed the medical system to run in the state, so we are... Uh, virtually going through a medical emergency right now in the state of West Bengal, where we have witnessed 23 deaths. Can you imagine? For, uh, you know, nothing is, I don't want to belittle anything, 
by saying please don't put me out of context but for one uh, one very very unfortunate horrific death of dr tilotoma we have literally sacrificed and we are not even talking about the 23 lives that have uh, been lost so uh, it's it's a welcome uh, decision of the honorable supreme court but i'm i'm quite sure that uh, Mamta Banerjee's government is still not going to take any action against the protesting doctors. Uh, it is my uh, humble request to the doctors, to the community, to the medical fraternity that they should return to work. The, they can uh, do a staggered, uh, you know, system of running the protest along with giving uh, medical services to the patients, uh, at least to the emergency patients. Like, okay. for example, there's one Mr. Vikram Bhattacharya, a 27-year-old guy from Konnagor. He uh, suffered an accident and he was taken to RG Corps and he bled all through and uh, he expired. So we cannot, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we cannot countenance such tragedies to uh, go on. So uh, I think they must uh, heed to the appeal of the Honorable Chief Justice and return to work. Okay, but before I open this up, Nilanjan, briefly, you do respect the essence of the protest and you're saying the protest can continue alongside the services. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Honorable Chief Minister has said that this protest, it is absolute, the demands are absolutely legitimate, but we do not agree with, you know, putting the entire medical system to, you know, uh, to stand still. So that cannot be allowed. What we are saying okay. that you demand justice. We are also demanding the justice. Chief Minister herself uh, was on the streets, you know. The Trinamool Congress is also demanding justice. We want justice. We want justice for Dr. Tilotoma. But uh, unfortunately, it has been taken over by some political elements who are, uh, you know, uh, wa wanting to create a ransom in the state. Okay, you have said that this has been taken over by political uh, elements. Uh, one of your own colleagues, Johar Sarkar, uh, he actually addressed this. And I'm just going to, if I can request everybody to just take a look, because he actually spoke about the nature of the protests. Um, and I want to play that out because one of the things that he addressed was, is this a political protest or is this not a political protest? And you are saying that this is a protest that has been taken over by political interests. Uh, I want to play this out and then we'll come to the rest of the panel. This is Johar Sarkar on why he decided to resign as TMC MP. What for you has been the tipping point that made you decide that now enough is enough and you can't continue representing the Trinamool Congress in Parliament anymore? What was the last straw? No, you know, I had to use some sort of a uh, shock method, uh, even though it looks a bit sensational. Uh, there was no way uh, I could otherwise get across to the leadership that this is not a political movement. You know, I, I mix around with common people. I stay in a very middle class area. I know what's going on. I know, uh, first we thought it was a class war between the Bhadraloks, the middle class, mm -hmm. upper middle class, mm -hmm. educated classes that don't like Mamta Banerjee. They don't like her. But then I found it's not a class war. It's actually more than that. Uh, the Even those who are not part of the educated layers they everybody's participating it's it's i've, I've gone and seen it for myself I, I, in some places i covered my face with handkerchief that's all mm -hmm. because i needed to find the pulse of the people and i saw something that's amazing you know at 15 16 i went out in the streets as a student activist i mean everybody does these things so i also did it from then till today, I'm 72, I have not seen such a spontaneous display of public anger sustained over a long period of time. We have seen yes. rage. Rage comes up, it goes away. That sort of a thing. It can be cooled down. But here, I've never seen such spontaneous display. So, Nilanjan, I wanted to play that out because you made the point about political interest taking over. And I'll I'll give you a chance to respond. Let me just get the others uh, into the conversation. Dr. Uh, Kunal Sarkar, uh, the Supreme Court, I know that you have previously said that you were disappointed that the Kolkata police had not been made to answer for many of the very technical, specific questions that the Chief Justice's bench always asks. Uh, today, too, 
uh, many specific questions were raised about the post-mortem, the forensic report. We now know that the CBI is sending the samples to All India Medical Institute and so on. But even while that integrity uh, was questioned, um, Chief Justice Chandrachud has asked the doctors to go back to work. What happens now, Dr. Sarkar? I think as we speak, uh, there is a general body meeting on of uh, all the medical colleges, the junior doctors together. Obviously, I'm not privy to what's happening in the meeting. But if we are to sort of think on predictable lines, then uh, probably the outcome or the conclusion from that meeting will be that people will respect People may not concur word for word, punctuation by punctuation, but I think the junior doctors will respect the, the you know, it was more of a, it seemed, it seemed more of a heavy fisted order than a request from the Chief yeah. Justice of India, asking doctors to get report back to work at 5 p.m. But I think probably the resumption will be under protest. Now the question is why? Now, you see, if we put things in perspective, you see, there has been enough tragedy. There has been enough hardening of positions. There has been enough arm wrestling of all descriptions. But really, you know, if we feel that, you know, there was somewhere in the various exchanges in the Supreme Court today, but I, I didn't really have time to see it in minute detail. But one line caught my attention, probably one of the justices made the observation that we know what is happening on the ground. So if that was to be correct in letter and spirit, that they do know what's happening on the ground, then in my mind, yes, resumption of duties is not an option. It had to happen. It had to happen. But it would have been, it would have been more kind of consoling for the very disturbed medical fraternity of the entire state if the supreme court if the chief justice had directed to a mandatory consultative process if the chief justice had directed that look in my mind you should get back to work in three days time and prior to that you bury your hatchets you get on to a consultation between the representative and the junior doctors and the health department try to have a discussion which they have and each time that they have there is really you know this has been the stiffest there is, this has been the most sternest of differences with the least amount of consultation so far so far okay okay i think well, the I, wants to respond to that but i'll let you complete your point well, yes. i think i think we have everybody admits resumption of duties, whether it is Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, whenever, <coughs> even the juniors understand that is not an option. It had to happen. Now, what has not happened? Because I hate to use the word, because if we put a very superficial ointment over a very deep wound, you know, to use that to parrot, to, to use that idiom once again, a cello tape on a stab wound, then what is going to happen is unless you see, all of us wants this turbulence to settle down. Yeah. And the, def and the deficiencies in the system. Why has it come to that? Because under the very nose of the health administration, there has been gross infiltration of the healthcare administration by nefarious elements, by ad hoc parallel administrations of various descriptions. Can, 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 can I ask you, Dr. Sarkar, before I go to the others, that I know Nilanjan has a brief interjection. Are you disappointed with what happened in court today to the extent, not in asking, not... Not in asking the doctors to go back, but that instruction came with no other relief to their demands. Look, I really think, Barkha, you know, if you if you really want, you know, we 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 are not we are not the classical trade unionists. Okay. Right. So you could have we 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 own up to the I think every junior doctor owns up to the difficulties owns up to the problems that are created when the junior doctors across the state they go on a strike we admit to it 
though we would contest some of the cases in specific that my friend from TMC has mentioned, but this is neither the time nor the forum to do that. But all I'm saying is that look, if there is a if there is a if there is an entire, you know, if there is a repository of unaddressed issues, if there is a whole lot of, you know, whole lot of grievances in the in the in the minds of the youngsters, and they yeah. are and without any kind of a concern, mature consultative process, they yeah. are thrust into work. I'll just give you one small example, one small before I end. I wish, I wish this process works out. I wish our hardening of stance and temper cool down. We wish that the health service and everything returns to normal. But God forbid, if some trouble breaks out, say, in the Arjikor campus of any description, one yeah. more flash in the pan. I'll just tell you one thing. I was there in the Arjikor vicinity just 24 hours back. And I just asked somebody, the CISF is, is monitoring the area. They are, mm -hmm. Now, who does the CISF report to? Who takes care? How do you yeah. upscale what is happening? So there are yeah. lots of unaddressed issues. But, yes. more, but more importantly, I would have thought it would have been more empathetic on both sides if the Supreme Court had directed and started a very lacking, you know, we were lacking in a consultative process, hardening of stances on two sides. There could have been a mandatory meeting between the two fronts, whatever, even if you articulate your issues. You get it off yeah. your chest. I, 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 I get the gist of what you're saying, and I do want to go to Dr. Tapas and Sanjoy. So, Nilanjan, please keep your introduction to one sentence for now because the other two guests haven't spoken. I think the important point being raised is that suppose the Supreme Court had said, all right, doctors get back to work, but Kolkata Police Commissioner, please resign. And I'm going to play out what Mamta Banerjee said on that. It is it is acceding to something that the doctors have been asking for. You say you respect the essence of their protest. What has the Bengal government granted the protesting doctors? What have you granted in terms of their, their demands, uh, Nilanjan? That, uh, Nilanjan uh, yeah. Everything other than that demand for the resignation of the CP of Kolkata and the... Uh, and from what I gather from the Chief Minister's press conference today, the Chief uh, the CP had offered to resign to the Honorable Chief Minister uh, yeah. on more than one occasions. Now, I just want yes. to make three points, three quick lines. One is okay. the Chief Minister today has said that uh, she is open to discussing with a team of junior doctors. They can come to her office and discuss whatever issues that they have. Secondly, they had they had uh, marched to the uh, you know the health uh, office the Swastavavan that we call in Bengali. So they had marched to that uh, place. They had placed all their demands out there. So most of their demands have been met other than this resignation of the, uh, you know, okay. the CP. And, uh, okay. and even from day one, when the resident doctors had put out certain demands, like they wanted the capital punishment, they also wanted construction of restroom for women, which the the, at that time, the hospital administration did start. And you know, this uh, this cabal, this uh, entire anti-Mamta brigade who wants uh, the resignation of the chief minister, they wanted to uh, blow it out of proportion as, as if they are trying to destroy all the evidences. So there is a there has been a very concrete, um, you know, fake news brigade. And it has been mainstream to some extent. Very sorry to say, Barkha, but even the mainstream media uh, did publish a number of fake news. You would uh, you okay. Would know that. Okay. I, uh, well, I, I mean, as you know, you and uh, or, or your colleague uh, from Trinamool and I have quarrelled uh, on this, uh, and I yes. have a whole bunch of things to say about it, and we can have a separate conversation yeah. on that for this for this moment to not be hijacked by what you and I. There has been a disinformation uh, campaign. What, 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 what I, what I, what I would say, what I would say for myself, I, I'm not going to speak on behalf of all media. What I would say for myself is that. There was almost no communication from the West Bengal government in the few days that followed That's not the correct. time. Very yes, little. I That's what I feel. That's understanding what... Bengali. I think a number of statements were given out by Mr. Okay. Alupan Bandhu. Okay. Right? Most okay. of them okay. were in Bengali okay. and you couldn't okay. most of them. Okay. 
Okay, Nilanjan, let's do this because otherwise this conversation will descend into a tutu meme between you and me. Uh, I think where I stand on the journalism we've done is ex very much in the public domain and what you feel about it is also very much in the public domain. Let's have a separate conversation on the media coverage and I'm up for it. Totally Not up for much it. I was put out. Not much corrigenda was put out. I, 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 I do not believe that there needed to be any corrigendum from the reporting I have done, and I'm saying that on record. I'm happy to debate that with you on another program if we can allow these two uh, other guests of ours to come in on this point. I, I have said that I stand by the reporting I've done, and I'm saying it again, and I'm happy because you're civil. And as long as someone is civil, I'm very happy to debate it with you separately on a separate program, and we'll do it. We'll definitely do it. Let's come back to the focus of what we're saying here. The focus here is Sanjoy. That while the Trinamool Congress calls a number of reports fake news, for example, the reference to the renovation, and they say the doctors had asked for it, there are many other pieces of evidence that have been placed before the court. This, as the bench said today, they will now be the subject of the CBI investigation, right? The CBI will have to establish is Nilanjan right? in saying this was fake news or were the doctors who alleged the cover up and reported by media <coughs> like me right right what did you make of the supreme court's hearing today what was the big takeaway for you sanjay uh, well barkha for me the big takeaway was to read the riot act to the doctors and i thought it was time that it is done there are certain yeah. professions like the legal profession uh, the supreme court in several cases and, and i paint the doctors with the same brush with which we paint ourselves the Supreme Court has come down hammer on tongs on lawyers going on strike by saying that certain professions, and we are the, uh, the second oldest and the third oldest profession, doctors and lawyers, and we cannot afford to be on strike. And uh, uh, therefore, for me, uh, I, I don't think you, needed, you need uh, a hand holding or comforting and say, please come and talk. All parties are mature. I, I am mercifully out of Bengal. I'm sitting in, in Delhi. And I can say from a position of neutrality that the egos on all sides have to come down. Uh, from the political side, the, uh, the government side, the doctor side, please bring down your egos. Because at the end of the day, if you are all of you, and I, I'm saying all of you, want to do something positive to commemorate the, the sacrifice of that horrific uh, uh, victim, victim, uh, you know, victim again sounds bad, but whatever that lady doctor, if you want she to, is she is a victim. She is a victim. She's not a survivor. She is yes. a victim. She's a victim. Yes. And if yes. you want to ensure that this never again happens to anyone, for God's sake, all of you come down from your egos. Go and talk. You don't need a Supreme Court Chief Justice to tell you go and talk. So that is a big takeaway for me. From, uh, for, Sanjay, from this, Sanjay, from Sanjay, can I can I argue this for briefly from from the doctor's perspective? I'm sure Tapas and Kunal will speak for themselves. But it occurs to me, having covered many incidents of you know, sexual violence across the country, that if doctors in this case did not have the national mobilizing capacity, I'm not only talking about West Bengal doctors, I'm talking about doctors across India, perhaps this would never have become the national issue that it did. Perhaps the Supreme Court would not have even picked it up sumo moto. So for one moment, consider that without doctors protesting everywhere, would all of us have been following this case as closely as we have? Well, you have used politically correct terms. Uh, you, I, you would, I would say the doctor's holding hostage ability, yes. And that having been said, yes. Now, you know, I have been a, a Delhi government standing council for years, and I know that the demand of doctors in Delhi has been security because in Delhi we have pitai. I'm sure that happens in West Bengal also. The patients come and beat up doctors when, when, there, is a, when there is a death. So our doctors are vulnerable. They need to be protected. The conditions of government hospitals, I know that because I had to defend the government hospitals of Delhi. They are woeful. So I understand from where the doctors are coming. And I understand it's very easy for us to say, go back to work and then go back to our lives and then have them yeah. risk another, another kind exactly. of vapor. But that exactly. having been said, that having been said, let's be very clear. Now, either you have faith in a system or you don't. There were WhatsApp circulating in Bengal saying, oh, tomorrow is a Supreme Court case and let us all switch off lights and have can, uh, um, uh, cell phone lights and all that, uh, all that, uh, whatever. And of course, the Chief Justice was not well, so that hearing didn't happen. But my point is this, that when you have putting your faith in a Supreme Court hearing or the Supreme Court process, the Supreme Court has expressed a solidarity with you. The Supreme Court has set up a national task force with doctors for you. 
that having been done, then you cannot say I will have my cake and eat it too. That yes, the Supreme okay. Court will be okay. adjudicated, and I will keep on protesting and keep and keep on holding the uh, the patients to to uh, to random. And let's be very clear. And let's be very clear. And these doctors should understand this: that it is not the rich people who are going to suffer. It is not Mamta Banerjee and her ministers who are going to suffer. It is those very poor people who have no other option but to come to your government hospitals who are going to suffer. So for God's okay. sake, stop this blackmailing. Okay, you think that the doctors are blackmailing. Let's hear from the doctors uh, who might turn around and remind you, Sanjoy, that on the eve of India's Independence Day, there were vandals in the thousands who came in and not just beat up uh, you know, not just sought to destroy property, but according to testimonies we have on camera from nursing staff that night were threatened with rape in the same way as was done, quote unquote, I'm quoting nursing staff that we have on camera here, as was done to the victim at the Arjikor Medical College. These are some of the images. The reason I'm bringing this up right now, Sanjoy, and I'll bring it up, Dr. Tapas, is that the doctors might well ask, all right, you asked us to go back to work. But who is taking responsibility and accountability for what happened on the night of 14th August? Who is taking responsibility and yes. accountability for the rape and murder? Yes, very briefly, no. because Tapas has Very, very yes. briefly, just a, just a minute response to yes. what you said. I absolutely yes. agree with the doctors. They were vulnerable and they were, they were put out of, over there to be uh, lynched. I have yes. my sympathy for them. I have my respect for them. But a lot of water has flowed since then. Okay, now you have the central forces guarding the hospital. Number one, mm. you have the mm. CBI, which is certainly not under the control of Mamta and her ministers, who are in charge of the investigation, not only of the investigation of the murder, as you know, it has been broad based. Now, everything, including all the affairs of RG Corps, are sure. being in investigated. And, and yes. of course, the CBI is no, uh, no uh, manna from heaven. We know how the CBI works, how impartial the CBI is. Already, the CBI has started all those leaks as to what that uh, Sanjay Mandal or whatever has said in, in his narco test is now being leaked to media. So whatever it is, but it is at least it is not under the control of the state government. So either yeah. you have faith in the system now, now that you have central protection of three forces, uh, three um, uh, three companies, now that the investigation is taken over from a complicit state government's police who you want removed, now it is very different from what circumstance you were putting to me. But I, 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 I hear you that you're now saying that it's not with the police. It's not with the police. So why are you uh, raising your questions to the police? However, some of my questions still remain. Uh, you are asking people to have faith in a system where many people believe that there was a Nilanjan will say this is fake news, this is disinformation. The fact is this is now officially in the Supreme Court. And the bench said the CBI will have to investigate. Is this fake news or did it happen, right? Uh, many people believe Dr. Sarkar, Dr. Pramanik are among those who have said so on this platform on record that they were, they were SOPs were not followed. Tapas Pramanik said the death declaration was three hours late, right? Uh, today in the Supreme Court, many questions were raised about what time uh, the, the, the unnatural death was registered, what time the GD entry was, uh, why was the postmortem conducted after 6 p.m.? I'm not making these up. This is a lawyer speaking in Supreme Court and many doctors saying this on record. I want to play out that clip for, on the question raised about the postmortem and then Tapas can respond. Take a look. Noting of the civil surgeon on the postmortem report that the deputy commissioner of police or the commissioner of police has certified it, then it has to go to the superintendent, superintendent certifies it and then sends it to the postmortem doctors. These three postmortem doctors, one of whom is a professor of forensic, knows this, but still, what is the reason? The reason was to get rid of the body. What Justice Partiwala was continuously asking, the GD entry number 576, I will ask them to show form 27. And I'll answer Justice Patiwala's questions in one minute. Form 27, please. Form 27 yes, is the first information report. Okay. In the first information report, there are various columns. Column 3, C2, gives the GD entry number. Column C? C2, gives the GD entry number by which the FIR was started. The FIR was started by GD entry number 577. The UD case was 576, as pointed out by Justice Party 1. It was registered at 11.40 in the night, 45 in the night. Marad, in the history... That was and the last time also. In the history, Marad, in my last 27 years in my career, 
I have never come across a case where seizure takes place prior to the lodging of the FIR. The FIR has been registered at 2330 hours. Yes. yes. Now, yes. there was. All right. So, again, uh, you know, I know the Trinamool Congress says that, you know, this, a lot of things being alleged about cover ups are fake news. However, this is now in on record as an allegation in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court responded by saying that they would not take a position on it right now because it has to be the subject of the CBI investigation. Dr. Tapas Pramanik, uh, how do you respond to what you've seen? You're a young doctor. You were on duty that night of the crime in Arjipur College. You have spoken to me extensively about SOPs that you say were not followed the chief justice has said you you know junior doctors must return to work uh, as a young doctor who has spoken out what do you say today so i will respect the supreme court orders but at the same time i'm also disappointed but uh, i would like to say one thing i beg to differ with the opinion of mr nilanjan that with mr vikram bhattacharya 28 year that a uh, fake news was spreading outside that he was unattended unattended yeah, can you hear it? he was yeah. unattended yeah, yeah. but it is uh, it is totally wrong actually he uh, he came to the emergency, denial emergency at around 9 am after that the emergency medical officer dr subir rai was attended the patient after that the dedicated orthopedics and surgery team attended him and initial resuscitation done after that, the suspected brain, due to suspected brain injury, the non uh, CT scan, uh, refer, uh, refer, advice CT scan. After that, one hypovolemic shock has been uh, happened, and the uh, gasping state. He was uh, at gasping state, and uh, death was declared by the time. And the patient was happy with the uh, Dr. Shubhi Roy before uh, uh, initiation of uh, uh, death certificate and uh, post mortem. But uh, a rumor is going on outside that the patient was uh, unattended. How how it is possible? Uh, the, uh, there are a lot of patients coming to the emergency. Uh, uh, every patient is not advised with the CT scan. That means the patient has been attended by the doctors. After that, the CT scan has been advised. So this opinion or this news is totally fake. Okay. And, I uh, I will, I will let Nilanjan respond to that because really we don't know, we are not medical people, what attention a, a patient should get. I am not in a position to say, I see Dr. Sarkar also raising his hand. Just one minute, everybody. Dr. Tapas, on the larger picture, you said you are you you will respect what the Supreme Court has said, but you are disappointed. Can you explain what you're disappointed by? Actually, I, I don't know. I'm disappointed because of the vandalism uh, occurred in 14th August. After that, we don't know the who are the responsible for these things. And uh, it will not be often uh, in future. I don't know. So I'm not sure uh, how can I join, uh, how can the junior doctors attend in the hospital and after that, uh, no incident will be happened in future. That's why we are disappointed totally. Okay. Dr. Sarkar, you wanting to add to that? Nilanjan, just let me take one comment from Dr. Sarkar. I'll come to you after that. Dr. Sarkar. Uh, I think, you know, I really uh, appreciate some of the content of uh, what Mr. Ghosh said from Delhi. Hmm. You see, Mr. Ghosh, you have probably uh, knowingly or unknowingly mixed up egos for issues. It was not a question of egos, Mr. Ghosh. It was a question of issues. Yes, the kind of, you know, the, the septicemia occurred in front of our eyes when this young girl lost her life. But for ad nauseum and repeatedly, various doctors, bodies, associations, including the Indian Medical Association, has been trying to bring to the attention of the health administration of West Bengal that what were the mounting issues that were happening month after month and year after year. So much so, you know, our, our one of the main, uh, one of the main uh, criminal luminaries right now, allegedly Shundeep Ghosh, if you just look back, his issues were being discussed for a good part of the last two years and nobody was paying any attention to this. And it is, it, is, it, is an, it is an amalgamation of all these problems, which today does not give 
a doctor working in the hospitals, a doctor on duty, a doctor, whatever. The confidence in the system, when we talk about faith in the system, you know, we are not talking about any medieval religious process. We are talking about our faith in the system, which is able to take cognizance of the problems and take corrective actions thereon. So it will be a little bit naive for us to presume that, you know, it was like an instant hardening of cement that because, yes, let nobody ever see an incident like this ever in their lives. But doctors, yeah. medical associations, Indian medical associations have been banging their heads on the wall for a good part of last, you know, a year and a half to two years and things yeah. were really not happening. Why were they not happening? Because perhaps you do not know the intricate details sitting in Delhi because repeatedly people were made to believe that a certain cartel, a certain cabal, a certain few people who are very close to the center of power were running, were, were having you know, unnecessary influences in the healthcare system, including yeah. the medical council and bodies like that. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right in saying that attitudes were hardened. But the question is, it is the people in administration we needed the intervention at the senior most level to come and say that, okay, we may have looked sideways for a good period of time, but time has now come, probably a bit too late. The yeah. sacrifice of this life was not necessary. That probably it's a bit too late. Let us at last call spade a spade, try to do a rationalizing and a cleanup act and that is exactly what we meant. That I, th I think, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry I'm interrupting you, Dr. Sarkar, but I think you make a very important point that I want to take to both Nilanjan and Sanjoy Ghosh, that it is not as if questions were not raised earlier, Nilanjan, about Mr. Sandeep Ghosh. When you were on, your, on my program last time, if you remember, I had asked you, why was he not removed immediately? Why was he transferred to Calcutta National Medical College, right? Um, there are students on camera. Now, if you say that, you know, they are making up things, I don't know. But they're on camera to us saying that they were harassed by him. They were scared by him. Two students spoke about thinking, contemplating suicide. One showed us his slashed wrist. He was a terrifying figure by all accounts. And the perception is that he was protected by the West Bengal government. And again, Nilanjan, with respect, I am not saying this. The Calcutta High Court asked, why is this man so powerful? Why has a government lawyer been sent to defend him? These are This is not Barkha. This is the Calcutta High Court. I want you to respond to Dr. Sarkar's point, to Tapas's point, And then I'll come to Sanjoy also. This is not, these are not questions, these are not Unfair questions. These are very fair questions. And the Trinamool Congress has said many things, but it's never explained why it wanted to protect this man called Sandeep Ghosh. The question of protection doesn't arise. First, you have to okay. understand these are two different issues. I'm glad that Dr. Dr. Shorkar brought this up. Uh, he said that there are many issues, including the, you know, the perceived corruption or, you know, this high handedness of uh, this ex principle. But these are two different issues. We are now talking about bringing justice for Dr. Tilottoma. And we don't see okay. much, much uh, progress uh, towards that uh, investigation. The, mm -hmm. uh, the perceived corruption in RG code, that's a separate issue. And for which uh, people like... What Dr. is the Shorten two things are, are connected, sir? Nilajan, no, what is this the one, This is where politics comes into play. These are political elements. These are political elements. You uh, See, by meaning political, I don't always mean that someone is from CPM or someone is from BJP. You can just okay. be a, a passionate Mamuta hater. We have pathological mm -hmm. hatred towards Mamuta in Bengal. So these are some of the people who, who try to connect these two issues. Now let me come to some of the points that were raised. Uh, okay. the, junior doc, the junior doctor here, he said that uh, I made a fake news about Vikram's death. But uh, whatever I said is from uh, what, uh, the account that has been shared by his mother. So I am so in Tilo Thomas' case, we are believing whatever her parents are saying. But in case of Vikram, 
we won't believe uh, his mother. What kind of uh, justice is this supposed to be? Now, uh, about CISF, now the entire premises of RG Corps is under CISF protection. Now, do you know mm. that when the CISF in charge, then we have some of the TMCP affiliated, TMCP is the student's body of the Trinamool Congress, the TMCP affiliated medical students whose hostel rooms have been broken down. So where is justice? The state police okay. is unable to do anything because the entire premises now comes under CISF protection. Who is going to seek okay, justice you, for that? Can I ask you something? You said yeah. to connect the allegations against Sandeep Ghosh to this case is a political response, not political party politics, but a kind of ideological anti-Mamta response. Yeah. I am I am I'm just asking yes, as a layperson. I'm just okay, anti-establishment. I'm asking as a layperson, and then I'll get Sanjoy and Tapas. They wanted to come in very briefly. Uh, um, he's the principal. The rape and murder happens in a college where he's the principal. In some ways, the moral responsibility, like if somebody in my team messes up, I may say that it's their incompetence, but the buck will stop with me. That's the nature of leadership. I believe that he should have resigned immediately and he should not have been given another posting. And the moment that happened, it created a perception. And the Calcutta High Court asked, why has a government lawyer been sent to defend him? You have not answered that, Nilanjan. Can we unmute Nilanjan? I can't hear Nilanjan. Nilanjan, Just, I can't uh, hear we, can, we should leave Sorry. aside whatever Calcutta, Calcutta High Court has said. Now the case is with the uh, Supreme Court. And Supreme we know, Court. Uh, okay. I, I won't make much of comments about the credibility okay. of Calcutta. Okay, that's uh, also something to, to process there. Uh, but no, because we have the sitting others. judges. We have sitting judges from Calcutta High Court who are, who are now sitting uh, with the BJP. They are uh, their member of parliament okay. of the BJP. Okay, okay. Okay. So I uh, comment about their credibility. All right, Sanjoy, you were wanting to respond to Dr. Sarkar and then Dr. Tapas will want to respond to Nilajit. No, just, uh, just one piece of uh, information for your viewers. Four uh, days before Modi was sworn in, this is the law which was published uh, by the central government. Mm -hmm. Okay? The Whistleblowers Act of 2014. You will be, your viewers will be surprised to know that till date this law has not been notified. Now, this is where if the central government had notified the Whistleblowers Act, then those lawyers of RG Corps would have had a way of ventilating their alleged grievances against this man. I mean, just as on a legal issue that there are form over there. Now, coming to what Dr. Sarkar said, Dr. Sarkar is very respected and I'm a great fan of what he is doing in the last two, three weeks. He should not misunderstand what I have said. Now, what I have said, I have said with regard to all the stakeholders. I have not targeted the doctors. I have said equally. The ego should not be there with the politicians and the police. Now, having said that, let's be, let's be very clear. We are not babes in the woods. Dr. Sarkar, with his great experience, also knows the malaise of Bengal, the alleged corruption, which is, uh, to be, which is infiltrated in all aspects of public life and government life, as is being talked about, cannot be solved in one day. And in any case, it cannot be solved without talking. So therefore, when the chief minister has held out an olive branch and said, I'm willing to talk all issues. Now, if you say now the minister, chief minister has to resign, that is like, you know, then, then it will, there'll be no talk. Okay. So if there, if there is, if you are going to have so much of an issue to even sit and talk, then I shudder to think how you're going to resolve the basic I issues. Think, I, 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 I think Dr. Sarkar has a brief interjection to you and then I'll let you complete your point. Dr. Sarkar, Dr. Sarkar, yes. Sandeep, I concur, I, I concur with most of the things you've said, but to clear a misconception, there was no refusal by the joint doctor's platform or whoever to discuss anything with the chief minister. There was an abortive meeting with the principal health secretary where six or seven associations gave their memorandums to them and requested the principal health secretary that we would we would definitely want, as you know, the, the temperature went on increasing and attaining the boiling point, that we hmm. would request a meeting and an, an audience with the chief minister. Somehow that did not, that did not come to pass. But I okay. just want to make a factual correction. To the best okay. of my knowledge, till date, there has been no refusal from any doctor's organizations to sit down 
and discuss the meeting with the chief minister. If you throw the question back at me and ask me that I am baffled by this position as well, that why has it not happened? Honestly, Sandeep and everybody, I Sanjay, cannot Sanjay. give you a straightforward Sanjay. answer. Why has it not happened so far? Okay, I'll let you complete your point. Can we unmute, please, Sanjoy? Can we unmute Sanjoy? Again, I was, I was talking in the context of not having any conditions preset for the talks. So you cannot have agitation and talks at the same time. Okay? In the con in the context, why when not? Supreme... Why 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 not? Without no, no. this agitation, without Sandeep, this agitation, me... what would be the leverage of the of no, anybody no, let on me, the streets? Let me let me make a point. Let me make yeah. a point. Let me make yes. a point. You see, even as I told you, you know, doctors, you know, we we are not the cleverest people on earth. No, by and and we are on the same professional bandwidth as everybody is, but. Time and again, in government institutions or sometimes in private, we do have these, these, these troubles surfacing. Few years back, when a junior doctor got manhandled in another medical college, hell broke loose. There was action like this for a few years. And everybody, you know, the people concerned had an opportunity to sit with the chief minister. She called all the doctors. She convened a big meeting. It was not just a meeting. That meeting was live streamed on television. And from thereafter, the temperature started cooling down. And OK, you know, these things happen, Sandeep. We are aware of it. Even we okay. are in the real world. But the okay. question is that some of these embalming, you know, some of these processes should have happened by this time even i, I, I am I think, that's fair. Are, I, 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 I think that's fair i think that's fair and sanjoy i'll that's... let you complete your point may i add a question of my own you have criticized the doctors uh you know the the, the prolonged protest as it were what is your opinion of how tmc has handled uh, everything uh, uh, let me answer that. Let me first yeah. uh, deal with what Dr. Sarkar is saying. Since Dr. Sarkar is not aware of my name, I won't blame him that he Sanjoy. doesn't know. That's, Sanjoy. That's okay. Sanjoy. That's okay. Yes. But I, I'm saying in the context, that he, will, he will not know what I have done. For 30 years, I have been a lawyer who has done a lot of industrial and labor cases. In fact, I was a lawyer of the striking pilots when we brought Air India to a grinding halt, Indian Airlines to a grinding halt. Now, if you doctors want to be like industrial workers and do a strike, then let me tell you about the Industrial Disputes Act. The Industrial Disputes Act says the moment a notice of strike is given, first a public utility has to give a notice of strike. And moment the notice of strike is given, if the conciliation process starts, both parties have to withhold their hand. That is the law. Now, if you want to be treated as a striking industrial worker, then that is the industrial law which will apply to you. So once you have gone to court, the court is sympathetic, the court has set up a committee once there is an investigation on, that is it. Now, coming to how the TMC has handled it, I am not a politician. I am not. A, I, I am here as a lawyer. It is not for me to comment on what the TMC has done and not done. Evidently, the TMC has made a solid big mess. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here where we are. But let's also be very clear. Let's also be very clear. And and I'm happy that this conversation today has 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 been a very sanitized conversation because. The, and the doctors and the civil society of Calcutta, and let me tell you, a lot of civil society who have nothing to do with politics are agitated and on the streets, and I respect them. And the civil society has kept out those politicians, those politicians who ensured that the body of the victim was burnt with petrol and kerosene in Hatras, have the uh, audacity to come and say, oh, why did you have a hurried cremation with the parents involved? So therefore, if the moment you ask me how the TMC has handled this, we get into a political arena. And I think the sad situation, you know, Barkha is actually thinking now time has come for us to have like in America term limits for prime ministers and chief ministers. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the problem I is, unfortunately, I, and, and I risk myself in saying this, unfortunately, uh, the, the sad thing about the people of our country is that uh, we have a Hobson's choice. If, we, if you think you will replace Mamta and you'll get another group in, uh, it'll be the devil and the deep blue sea. And that's the sad okay. reality. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I just I just want to say, I know Nilanjan has his hand up, but tapas, then we have to start taking concluding remarks after that. But I reported on Hathras. I reported on Bilkis Banu. I've reported on RG Kaur. And I think that we must ask questions of 
all political parties with the same fierceness and with the same lack of fear and risk you know many politicians telling us that oh you are biased you are biased this we hear every day as journalists that is our job everybody will call us biased when they don't like what we are doing let's come back to tapas and i do i'm so sorry but we have to start taking concluding remarks now uh, dr tapas what happens now sir what happens now you have you and nilanjan have disagreed over the handling of that one patient but the larger picture if you do go back to work uh, what happens you know how do you see the next few weeks panning out actually west bengal junior doctors fund are uh, doing their pan gb meeting and they will take the decision whether they will join or not actually i don't know what they are uh, okay. taking any decision or not and i'd like to say one thing and i beg to uh, differ with uh, mr nilanjan das and he is saying the date of dr tilottama and date of vikram bhattacharya uh, most like same but i would like to say that this is totally different thing this is totally different thing and he is also saying that the corruption is the one thing and the uh, this death is other thing but no i am uh, i i beg to differ this opinion also corruption and this death is interrelated because the corruption ultimately lead to this death because uh, dr sandeep ghosh was enjoying a absolute power for last 3 years a lot of complaint against him by the uh, by the uh, akhtar ali sir, uh, sir deputy superintendent of the uh, uh, deputy superintendent by the time of arjikar medical college and hospital after that no action has been taken against him and after that he is taking a absolute power okay. and this day has come i think you make the important point that the corruption and the and the uh, oh, uh, rape and murder corruption and rape are, are interrelated are, okay nilanjan interrelated i think i got your point nilanjan i think that's an important point because the cbi's arrest of sandeep ghosh has also been in a financial case tell me right? how 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 are they interrelated and how the corruption led to uh, her uh, rape and murder tapas, please do. Tapas, 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 no, not to the crime, but maybe to the alleged cover-up. Raktapas, do you want to react? Raktapas, do you want to answer? Ha- actually, 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 this uh, this uh, this type of environment in the Arjikar Medical College, this was totally fear fearful environment created by the ex-principal Shondip Ghosh. After that, most that of the doctors, most. What has well, that got to do with the rape and murder? Please explain. Okay, can I can can I try and ask? If if if. If the environment is fearful, the crime will be happened. How? I mean, this is this is completely, you know, this is not getting into my head. Maybe I'm, I'm. This is. Uh, I take it as a limitation of my rational faculty. But you know, people okay, are not buying okay. this argument. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Are, are you saying? Okay. Okay. I don't know about people, but in the Supreme Court, in the clip we played out for you, there were questions raised about the SOPs followed vis-a-vis the post-mortem, the declaration of death. Except that is something that is a part of the investigation. I'm not getting into one that. One minute, one minute. Saying, you asked, you asked you know the question. I'm trying to. Doctors. The body was you born are... with kerosene. So let's not get you into asked... this. Uh, let's not get you into this. You asked a question, Nilanjan. One minute. Nilanjan, let me speak and then you can speak. You yeah. asked a question. I am trying to respond to that question. That many of the protesting doctors believe or want to know what is the connection between this man Sanjoy Roy arrested for the rape and Sandeep Ghosh. why were certain sops not followed why did the college tell the family that their daughter had died by suicide in call number 3 right there are questions like this the cbi will investigate them but to, to say but to say that these are the cbi will have the last word we have agreed we have to trust now the process yeah, of the supreme court yeah that is what i'm trying to say we have all agreed you on see, that okay you see okay, these are this, these are some of the statements from the government council or the you know the solicitor general so we can these are not statements from the supreme court these are not observations or rulings of the supreme court so let's get this straight there are arguments made in against it and there there are they have been uh, countered to by mr kapil sibbal so that is a different story now uh, here you said that these two are interlinked so this is where yeah. politics comes into play and there is a cabal who is anti establishment and who are trying to do uh, the, uh, who are trying this narrative that mamta there is an anti incumbents against mamta banerjee okay what will be okay what which, will be the olive branch okay, let's let's look ahead however no no please let me finish barkha i also need to respond to okay. my very okay. very senior colleague what mr johar sarkar has said i also need to respond to that but uh, yes. since uh, he said that there should be term limits for the chief minister let me assure you 
uh, Kolkata is not just Bengal. A huge section of Bengal now feel frustrated, suffocated by what is happening in Kolkata right now. What is, Kolkata, even the people, general people, I travel on, I commute on, uh, you know, the local bus and train. So I can sense the feeling of the people. People are disgusted right now with what is happening. Okay. Every day, okay. the BJP. Okay. The CPM, now, what about yeah, your own yeah. colleague? What, what, about, what about your own colleague? Nilanjan, you yeah. said you wanted to respond yes, to that. Yeah. We also, yes, my very, very senior colleague, uh, Sri Johar Sharkar, ex-IS, uh, he yes. said that... Um, he said that he also visited some of the places where agitations were taking place. You have to understand all these agitations, they are planned. However, they uh, they don't uh, seek any uh, permission from the administration. But these are all planned by political interests. So uh, since Mr. Johar Sarkar went to such places, of course, you will have people who are anti-establishment, who are anti-TMC. And they are trying to... Uh, sell this narrative that everything is, uh, you know, finished. So, so, uh, so, so are, you, are, 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 you, are you, are you saying all the protests on the streets of Kolkata for so many weeks are all political? All yes. of them? Yes. Of nobody, of nobody, course. nobody has come that out happens. because they care no, about no. the woman? Of course they did. Many TMC people, many TMC people, let me tell you, went on the uh, 14th uh, night that, that reclaimed the night to program. Many TMC people went out. What okay. about the uh, the uh, you know the Navano Obhiyan or you know the Dofaag uh, Dabiag Momotar Podotag? These are kind of slogans that are being raised that okay. we want the resignation okay. of the chief minister. These are all you know BJP programs, BJP funded CPM. Uh, CPM so is uh, giving the intellectual you, faculty to that. You, yeah, and, and they, you they are uh, waging this do you disagree? Absolutely. Do you dis do you disagree with Johar Sarkar? I do disagree to him uh, on this okay. that uh, there is a there is a growing sentiment against the government. So these are the people he went to some of the places maybe uh, which are carrying okay. out the uh, agitation. So probably that is the sense that he has okay. picked up. Okay, I don't. Okay, with, I, I absolutely respect his decision of resi of resigning from the Rajya Sabha. Okay. At least he has not. Uh, he has not like another of his colleague, another Rajya Sabha member. He has not maligned the party on social media. You can understand okay. which uh, Rajya Sabha member I'm talking about. Okay, I I do indeed. I must now give the closing comment to Dr. Kunal Sarkar. Where do we go from here? Uh, is there a possibility to go from here to a place where? medical uh, sort of services can resume, but there is hope that justice will be served. That is the place we need to go to. Dr. Sarkar. Uh, Barkha, in the midst of all this angst and outrage, you see, I think uh, we must uh, have an acceptance of reality by the people that yes, the process of investigation and justice is not going to be like instant coffee. It is going to take its own time and people will have to brace back and give the process its due time that it takes. You know, we just cannot want instant outcomes like a television serial that in the fifth episode or sixth episode it is going to conclude. It is not going to follow your or my timeline. Doctors will get back to work. Doctors had to get back to work and probably for the foreseeable future, doctors will get back to work with protests. And our request to the very experienced governance of West Bengal, who does not lack the numerical authority, the dominance in the assembly, is to make a genuine and honest effort to rationalize and clean up this all the, all the misdeeds and the infiltrations of our healthcare administration because this, at the end of it, is what the medical community at large is asking for. And I'm, this, is okay. not to, this is not to pick up a political brownie point, but, to, but just to tell Nilanjan that you see, when IMA has been coming out with repeated dossiers that enumerate what has been happening, remember that a great majority of the IMA people are actually people of the of the of the of your TMC medical administration. Who's so the people of IMA? Are, 
people are crossing Sorry. party lines and I think, I, I, I think he has a brief interjection and then I do have to close with Dr. Sarkar Lanjan. What is your brief who, interjection? Who is the secretary of IMA West Bengal? Mr. Dr. Dr. Sarkar. Sorry? Who is the secretary of IMA West Bengal? Look, you know, I have not memorized any organograms and neither do I have to. But no, these no, are... That, that, that gives you the no, answer. The that, question, that gives you the answer. Lanjan, that okay, okay. Dr. Sh it is Dr. Shantanu Sen. It is Dr. Shantanu Sen. He has been that's put what out I'm of saying. the post from the party. He, that's he what is I'm definitely saying. on the CCMC. Okay, Dr. Shantanu, Shantanu Sen. He, he has been put out of all positions on the party. Saying. I am okay, appreciating okay. that. People are okay. crossing the party line and saying this. This is to be respected. That's what I'm okay. saying. Bilan. Okay, let's let's before we get lost in the weeds of very intricate Bengal politics, I think we must leave it here with a hope for justice. That is, I think, something we can agree on. There is a young woman who was raped and killed, and it has been a month. I think the people, her family, and people at large deserve more information on what we know so far. And I hope the Supreme Court's live stream of proceedings helps us. Uh, to get to know more. We leave it there. I will only say thank you that everybody was polite. Uh, they, you know, I think that's very important. Uh, we disagreed, but we disagreed with civility. And long may we be able to disagree in that manner so that our conversations become more honest. Thank you, Dr. Sarkar, Sanjoy Ghosh, Dr. Tapas, and to Nilanjan. Thank you very much. And to our audience, thank you for watching. See you soon. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo's Story and support independent, robust journalism.